Hi, today's demonstration from HomeRoastCoffee.com is roasting with the Nesco Professional Coffee Roaster. Uh, we haven't done this one before because we, we believe that it's one of the easiest coffee roasters to use. Um, I have had some questions on it, so we're going to go through roasting with a Nesco. We're going to kind of skip through the how to roast and first crack and second crack and a lot of that. Uh, because this machine is so easy and so nice. You can also read our directions, our one page. This is on our free downloads, simple coffee roasting directions using the Nesco Pro Roaster. I also recommend that with this roaster that you print off, also from our free downloads, the roast level, uh, homeroastcoffee.com roast level sheet, and it shows and describes each roast level. So this comes in real handy when we're roasting. We'll show you that later. Um, the Nesco comes with a good direction book. It's, it's short, it's fairly precise, and describes what you need to know. It's not a lot of in-depth information, but it's handy and it's well written. That's easy to use. Um, you are going to want to wash some of the parts when you first get it in. So I've taken it apart to show you uh, what you'd end up with here. This is the lid. This part, this will be assembled, but we take it apart and rinse this off, pretty much just wipe it down. That simply goes on there, the little rubber grommet slides in there like that. That's like that. Um, this is the chaff collector. This is the roasting chamber. Uh, when we're done roasting, I just turn this upside down. You can see it's perforated. Rinse it out, then I let it dry. Uh, every once in a while I'll take a bottle brush and run it around here to clean out anything that hasn't been rinsed out, but that's all there is to that. Before I start a roast, I always put this on here. That seems to prevent any small beans from getting underneath the rotating auger here. Uh, part of the reason this works so well, the auger makes sure that your beans move, whether you have fewer or more beans in it. Um, it does a nice job of keeping your roast very, very even. So that's one of the reasons we love this roaster. These parts have all been washed out. This comes out, but you really don't need to. It's a, it just goes in this rubber grommet. And usually what I do is I just rinse this out under a faucet. So when we're done, it'll have some, uh, some of the chaff left in it. I just take that, rinse it under a sink, knock it out, let it dry, and you're good. So, to start roasting, it is literally this simple. We've plugged it in. Uh, it starts out with 20 minutes. I recommend starting your first few roasts at least with about 25. Now, it has a handy feature that it will recall the last roast. And look there, the last roast we did was 25 minutes, so we'll start with 25 minutes. It is literally this easy. You simply, we're using our Columbia Supremo today, but uh, one of the advantages of roasting your own coffee is all the available coffees. You know, just lined up here, I've got our Brazil Santo Antonio, that's a pea berry, our El Salvador, a Jamaica Blue Mountain, Panama, Sumatra, Tanzania, and a Yemen. Each one of those coffees will have a different taste, uh, depending on whether you roast it light or dark, and according to where it came from. So it's kind of like a little tour of the world. This is so simple, you don't have to weigh it. You can, of course, if you want, but it's literally this simple, no cups, you just see the line. Uh, if I was doing a dark roast, I'd just stop there at the dark roast line. I like ours a little lighter, so we keep going to about, just about the full line there. That'll be about four and a half to five ounces of coffee. Uh, like I said, if you'd like to weigh it, go ahead and weigh it. We don't need to. You simply put, that's there. Add this here. This piece goes on here, the screen. Close this until you hear it click. And then you'll press start. What we're going to do is we're going to start it. We'll give you a couple of cent minutes to see it. I did want to mention just a couple of the things about this machine. Uh, this particular machine, uh, this exact machine, is just about two years old. Two years old. It has had hundreds of roasts. And look at it. It's, it's one of the nicest looking appliances in the house. It's well made. It's durable. Uh, it will give you a lot of service. I've used this hundreds of times and it still looks like, to me, brand new. Um, 
very durable. There is little or no smoke thanks to the smoke arrester that's built in here. Um, it's very nice if you do a lot of roasts or you have an apartment. You won't set off the smoke alarms. You can do several roasts and I've not had a problem with smoke alarms with this. A um, couple of the downsides. It, you can't, because of the smoke arrester, you don't smell the coffee quite as much as you would with another method. So if you're used to roasting by smell, uh, that will be somewhat muted. Uh, it's also a little difficult to hear the cracks. So if you're used to roasting by cracks, you're doing it in a skillet now or a uh, a pot, a whirly pop, something like that, and you roast by the cracks. Um, it's a little hard to hear the cracks with this machine thanks to the auger here, but the auger does make sure that you have a very nice even roast, so I, I really like it for that. The other thing that I'm, I'm not 100% on this roaster, it, uh, the, the timer counts down in whole minutes, where some roasts could be affected at you know, 5, 10, 15, 30 seconds, um, if that's an issue, just use a timing device. Uh, this does add on five minutes for the cool down cycle, so it's really a 20 minute roast here with a five minute cool down. And we can hit cool down at any point, and that's usually what I do. So if you hit the cool down at three minutes, the next time you would want to set it up at uh, 22 minutes for your total roast, and then you could just let it go all the way through the roast and you'll be all set. So I'll get it going here, and we'll come back a little later when it's. Uh, when it's uh, a little further into the roast and we're getting ready to uh, end it. So right now all I have to do is hit the start button. And you can hear the, hear the auger, the fan's on, the heat's started up, it's roasting. If we want to start our timer, we can start our timer so we know about when we're done, but this will count down in whole minutes. We'll come back in a little bit when we're closer to the uh, beans getting roasted. Hi, we're back. It's 17 minutes on our countdown timer. We've been roasting for about 8 minutes here. Just wanted to show you quick, you can see the chaff separating from the bean. You can see that the beans are expanding a little bit. Uh, it's still too light to stop the roast. But if you smell it, and don't get your face too close here because the, the, the hot air is blowing out right here. But this is marvelously sweet. Uh, the smell is a little bit grassy yet. The beans, as you can see, are starting to expand. They're rising up. We'll come back when we're a little closer to the end of the roast. We're back. We're now at, uh, we're down to 10 minutes. So it's been 15 minutes of roasting. You can see that on our timer here. You can see that the beans have expanded. We can hear a little bit of cracking. And by the roasting smell, uh, because I've been doing this for quite a while, this is at about an American roast currently. This is where our roast level sheet comes in real handy. You can just hold her up here and compare it. And I'm saying we're right about in here at this point. So I'm thinking this is probably a good point to stop our roast and go into the cool cycle. I can no longer hear cracking, so we're probably just past first crack. And all I've got to do is hit the cool button and it'll go into its five minute cool cycle. There it is. Nothing to do, you let it cool down the beans, you'll notice that it's separating off whatever chaff hasn't uh, come off the beans yet. Um, the one thing you do want to be very careful with this machine, this metal piece here and here gets very hot. You want to make sure it's not around children or pets or yourself. Just don't touch that, you're fine. Uh, at this point, it's a uh, no-brainer, you just uh, step back and let it do its thing. Hi, we're back. The roaster is finished. We've given it a couple of minutes to cool down in the directions I believe it recommends five minutes. Um, I have a tendency to cheat because I just don't follow directions well. So you very carefully, we use a hot pad, simply open that up and you can see there's just a little bit of brown in there. After a couple of roasts I clean that up. Now this I very carefully lift off because it will be hot. And I just take this thing just like it is and hold it under a kitchen sink and rinse it out once it's cool. And then let it completely dry before I use it. The chaff collector, the cup, I'll show you here. This is hot, but that's the majority of the chaff off the beans. 
and all I do with this is dump it out in a garbage can or actually this is really good in your garden it makes great compost so that's a nice way to help the earth and then I just rinse this out in the sink as well so that's not bad now we take our beautiful roasted beans this is about an American roast here and we simply pour it into our stand-up pouch. You can use a Ziploc bag for this. Uh, that works very, very well. You just squeeze out the air. I use a funnel to get them into the bag. It makes it easy to pour. That way you're not picking up beans off the table or whatever. Now that's still hot, so we put it where it can't get into trouble. Like such. We've got, what do we got here? 3.6 ounces of coffee. I like to label my bags so I know exactly what I've got. And there you have it from this roast. We've got 3.6 ounces of our lovely Columbia Excelso coffee. And here's the real, the real treat to roasting your own coffee. This is, you can use this tomorrow or four hours from now, whatever you like, or a week from now. But the real value in roasting your own coffee, I roasted this one about a week ago. That's just marvelous. That's fresh coffee. This is a Sumatra we did in the Nesco about a week ago. Here's uh, El Salvador that we've done. Uh, this is our kick-ass blend. I hope I can say that on YouTube. This one I just did earlier today. It's a Yemen. And let's see if there's any scent to this yet. Oh, a little bit, a little bit. That's a little darker roast. That's going to be lovely tomorrow or the day after. And follow that with another Colombian that I did earlier today. That's why you roast your own coffee at home. It is just this easy. You simply dust this thing off, uh, wipe these out, rinse these items out, you're done. You've got freshly roasted coffee. It's just better when it's fresher. I hope this has been informational and helpful to you. Please feel free to give us a call, email us at uh, customer service at homeroastcoffee.com to answer any questions you might have about coffee. Thanks for watching our YouTube video on roasting with a Nesco Pro Coffee Roaster. Thanks.